Greetings, this is Successgo, and welcome to this week's episode of The Warships in World of Warships, where every week we look at a bit of the history, the hard statistics, modules, and gameplay of a selected ship. Considering things, I should have actually made that intro a very long time ago. But anyways, the ship we're going to be looking at this week, I had a bit of hard time looking and thinking what ship I was actually going to look at. And then I remembered I had this as a ship in my hardware, this little devil of a ship. The Minikaze, which means Summit Wind, the Tier 5 Imperial Japanese Navy destroyer. Why is it a devil? Not historically. The Minikazes were built in the 1918s to the 1922 as part of the Imperial Japanese Navy's 8-4 fleet program. The design of the ship was different from previous Japanese designs, which often followed the British design. And said this one now follows the German design, where the forecastle was extended and the bridge set back from the break. This would of course allow for ample space for torpedo tubes in between, and in theory lessen the effects from rough seas, which would now break up on the forecastle rather than beating on the bridge. The guns were also raised above the deck rather than being on the deck itself. There was also a subclass in the group which was identified as the Nokaze class, which was made up of three ships. The difference from the Minikaze was the gun arrangement in order to improve ammunition supply and gun control. In all, 15 ships were completed, but if you were to consider the similarly designed Momi class, it would be a total of 36 ships. These ships would become the backbone of the Japanese Navy's combined fleet until the arrival of the Fubuki class in the late 1920s. On the outbreak of World War II, the designs were considered obsolete, but rather than scrapping them, they were assigned to secondary roles. And actually, some of the ships were already disarmed and decommissioned, but were of course recommissioned and rearmed. Most of the ships were relegated to escort roles, and some into destroyer transports. Two of the Minikazes were actually de-raided into patrol boats, a fate which was shared with the similarly designed Momi-class destroyers. Out of the 15 ships, only four survived the war, with two being given as prizes of war to the United Kingdom and the Republic of China. Moving on to the modules section. Looking at the modules here, we could see she starts out in her 1920 hull. Moving up, she goes into her 1938 hull right here. What this does is add some changes to the anti-aircraft guns, but to be honest, if we're going to talk about anti-aircraft guns and a destroyer, why are we going to even talk about that? That's irrelevant right there. She starts off with Type 92 torpedoes, and our upgraded torpedoes are Type 89. This would, of course, add more range. We'll discuss that in detail along with the rest of the stats, such as her type, what her radar does and what her gun upgrades it does in detail after this. Now we just upgrade that. No real visual changes that much here other than just her, just some changes to her anti-aircraft guns around here. Now if we're going to talk about her upgrades here, I always recommend, the number one thing I always recommend if you're playing a destroyer, get main battery modification 1. This modification will save you. This, of course, if you are not familiar, and I'll read it to you right now, this would decrease the chance of magazine detonation by 20%. This is, of course, basically known as getting ammo rack. It also would decrease the chance of critical damage to the main battery, which is your guns itself, by 20%. And, of course, decrease your main battery repair time by 20%. For the second one, it's up to you, to be honest. But I, of course, wouldn't bother getting AA gun modification too which increases range, since there is no real point in being an anti-aircraft destroyer in the game. Now for the last one, I decided just to put this for the fun of it, Damage Control System Modification 1, which decreases my chance of flooding by 3% and chance of fire by 5%. Not really important, actually anything here is, it's up to you to be honest also, whatever you want. So if you have the spare cash, you might as well just put something there if you want to. Moving along now to the stats. As we can see, the stock Minikaze has a hit point of 9,600, a firing range of 6.9 kilometers, a rate of fire of 5.0 rounds per minute, a 180 degree turret turn of 45 seconds, a max shell dispersion of 67 meters, a max HE damage of 2,200, a chance of fire that is 10%, a max AP damage of 2,000, a max torpedo range of 7 kilometers, reload time on the torpedoes which is 47 seconds, max torpedo damage of 14,400, a max speed, this is the ship speed itself, of 39 knots, a turning radius of 550 meters, a rudder shift time of 4.2 seconds, a surface detectability of 5.9 kilometers, and aerial detectability of 3.1 kilometers. Now comparing it with the upgraded Minikaze, 
You can see that the hit points for the Minikaze increases to 10,900. The firing range also increases to 7.6 kilometers. The rate of fire speeds up to 6 rounds a minute. Third turn is still the same. Max shell dispersion increases to 72 meters. HE damage, AP damage, chance of fire, the same. Torp range increases to, from 7 kilometers to 10 kilometers. That is very, very good increase right there. This gives it somewhat like, for its tier, baby long lances. Uh, reload time is still the same. Max torp damage still the same. Speed is still the same. But the rotor shift time for the upgraded Minikaze, the fully upgraded Minikaze, is 2.8 seconds. That is notably faster than the stock rudder shift time on the Minikaze. Now, comparing the upgraded Minikaze with a fully upgraded Nicholas, which is also which is the tier 5 uh, destroyer for the United States Navy tree, you can see that the hit points of the Nicholas is actually higher than that of the Minikaze. Firing range is also called longer. Rate of fire, of course, faster. This is actually two times faster than the upgraded Minikaze's guns. Gun traverse much faster, max dispersion uh, slight around roughly 20, 20 meters greater, around a bit above or below that. Uh, HE damage much less, but of course this is outdated by the fact it can output more rounds. Chance of fire 5%, max AP damage uh, slightly higher by 100 compared to the Minikaze. But of course this is outputted by the fact that the Nicol Nicholas pretty much fi can fire twice as fast as the Minikaze. Torpedo range, though, is where we see a big difference. The Nicholas gets a very sad 5.5 kilometers torpedo range, does less damage, and has a longer reload time. But I, if I'm not mistaken, the Nicholas actually has more torpedo tubes. The max speed of a Nicholas destroyer is 37 knots, that is 2 knots slower than the Minikaze. The turning radius is also 50 meters greater. The rotor shift time is slower by 0.7 seconds. Surface detectability is notably higher on the Nicholas, but. Aerial detectability is the same for both destroyers. Moving along to some gameplay here, I have popped my smoke. There's actually some enemies straight ahead. I'm going to the cap circle here. There's a destroyer that just appeared, playing really, playing this really aggressively. Surprisingly, even though the stats say uh, it's not, it won't perform well in close range situations against other destroyers, the ship actually performs really well. It's actually really proficient at knife fighting, especially with those torpedoes. Anyways, uh, taking some fire right there. He's also popped the smoke. Dropping some torps, trying to... Ooh, he got my engine, but I repaired that anyways. Dropping some torps to deny some area there. Getting out of here. More more shells just flew past over me. That dive bomber just went in the water. But yeah, as I said, it's a very... It, it is an actually a very... It's actually a very aggressive ship. So you, you have to be somewhat aggressive with it. And, and to the point actually that you might be prone to recklessness. So you sort of have to be careful, and I'm actually very prone to recklessness in that ship because it's just so fun to drive. And who I just got that got gutted that guy pretty hard right there with two torpedoes. That destroyer's still over there. He's capping the flag now, I'm trying to go around this island, try to try to try to find what my situation is. We have like a cruiser coming in, another destroyer. Our other cruisers in. That's a Uvari. He's gonna get wrecked though, pretty hard. He got the bombers overhead. Those torpedoes are also coming in. That's where most likely the enemy destroyer over there is. Time to look for him. Full speed. And boom, there goes our Ubari. And I'm all alone here. Eh, not much I could really do. I, I might as well be a bit reckless here, as I said. <laughs> as I said, actually no, as I said, this... This ship is prone to making you do horrible decisions, but at the same time, these horrible decisions lead to so many opportunities. But I guess it depends from player to player, to be honest, and the logic. Put some torpedoes down there for that, that cruiser that's coming in. Perhaps they hit, and he's shooting at me, but the island there provides some ample protection. But I know the Minikaze is to my left, the enemy destroyer over there, so I'm going to beach myself and try and lure him out. Alright. Beached? I would assume he's seen me. Reverse, reverse, so I can do some quick corrections if anything happens. And yep, there he is. He's coming out. He's coming out. And he's turning, he's turning. Will he drop torps? Is he gonna drop torps? Yep, he's dropped torps, he's dropped torps. Drive right into the island, drive right into the island. Turn left. Oh, there you go. Some correction. Oh, wait, nope, 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 nope. No need to correct. Alright, looks like that Minikaze is sort of out of the way now, and I'm more concerned of that cruiser. But I probably could try and hit the Minikaze if he comes through here. Uh, nope, he's not falling for it. He's going around. 
because my allies have returned as a battleship right behind me also. And that cruiser though, he's he sees me. Let's drop a torp for him though in case. But oh ouch. That hurt. But there goes that cruiser. I am making very bad decisions right here, but these decisions are perfectly fun. Perfectly reckless. This is what this ship is. It is the devil. It is it promotes some level of insanity to drive and that cruiser has dropped his torpedoes. And I've actually started to lure that cruiser into where I want him to be. He's he's gone left, that means he's very open to suggestion right there. Let's drop it here and scare him to the left also back again from his right from let's scare him back to going to left. Right looks like he's seen that he's actually going left now. One second of my torpedo troops try and get this torp salvo in, the single torp these two torps in. Alright, dropped. Seven seconds on my next tube. He's probably gonna kill me before that happens, or if I'm lucky enough. Oh no, he gets me. But alright, those tubes are those torpedoes are in the water and they're still going. They are still going. Will they hit? And it hits! We have a it's but a scratch. This ship is a fun ship to play. And because well, you can literally lose your mind in just driving it. Very reckless play, very aggressive play right there. But ultimately, very, very fun play. I hope you guys learned something new from this overview of the Minikaze. Some announcements right now though. If you guys want to win some beta keys, head over to this video that I'm linking up right now on screen. Also, if you want to send in your submissions for Re Replay Academy, just follow the prescribed format down below. The email is also down below where you should send your replays. And so I think that's around it. Uh, like, favorite, subscribe, comment, private reactions, whatever. And I'll catch you guys next time. Just upgrade that. No real visual changes that much here, other than just her, just some changes to her anti-aircraft guns around here. Now, if we're going to talk about her upgrades here, I always recommend, the number one thing I always recommend, if you're playing as a destroyer, get main battery modification 1. This modification will save you. This, of course, if you are not familiar, and I'll read it to you right now, this would decrease the chance of magazine detonation by 20%. This is, of course, basically known as getting ammo rack. She, it also would decrease the chance of critical damage to the main battery, which is your guns itself, by 20%. And of course, decrease your main battery repair time by 20%. For the second one, uh, it's up to you to be honest, but I of course wouldn't bother getting AA gun modification 2, which increases range, since there is no real point in being an anti-aircraft destroyer in the game. Now for the last one, I decided just to put this for the fun of it, Damage Control System Modification 1, which decreases was extended and the bridge set back from the break. This would of course allow for ample space for torpedo tubes in between, and in theory lessen the effects from rough seas, which would now break up on the forecastle rather than beating on the bridge. The guns were also raised above the deck rather than being on the deck itself. There was also a subclass in the group which was identified as the Nokaze class, which was made up of three ships. The difference from the Minikaze was the gun arrangement in order to improve ammunition supply and gun control. In all, 15 ships were completed, but if you were to consider the similarly designed Momi class, it would be a total of 36 ships. These ships would become the backbone of the Japanese Navy's combined fleet until the arrival of the Fubuki class in the late 1920s. On the outbreak of World War II, the designs were considered obsolete, but rather than scrapping them, they were assigned to secondary roles. And actually, some of the ships were already disarmed and decommissioned. <music> Greetings, this is SuccessGo, and welcome to this week's episode of The Warships in World of Warships, where every week we look at a bit of the history, the hard statistics, modules, and gameplay of a selected ship. Considering things, I should have actually made that intro a very long time ago. But anyways, the ship we're going to be looking at this week, I had a bit of a hard time looking and thinking what ship I was actually going to look at. 
And then I remembered I had this little ship in my hardware, this little devil of a ship. The Minikaze, which means Summit Wind, the Tier 5 Imperial Japanese Navy destroyer. Why is it a devil? Not historically. The Minikazes were built in the 1918s to the 1922 as part of the Imperial Japanese Navy's 8-4 fleet program. The design of the ship was different from previous Japanese designs, which often followed the British design. And said this one now follows the German design, where the forecastle missioned, but were of course recommissioned and rearmed. Most of the ships were relegated to escort roles, and some into destroyer transports. Two of the Minikazes were actually derated into patrol boats, a fate which was shared with the similarly designed Momi-class destroyers. Out of the 15 ships, only four survived the war, with two being given as prizes of war to the United Kingdom and the Republic of China. Moving on to the modules section. Looking at the modules here, we could see she starts out in her 1920 hull. Moving up, she goes into her 1938 hull right here. What this does is add some changes to the anti-aircraft guns, but to be honest, if we're going to talk about anti-aircraft guns and a destroyer, why are we going to even talk about that? That's irrelevant right there. She starts off with Type 92 torpedoes, and our upgraded torpedoes are Type 89. This would, of course, add more range. We'll discuss that in detail along with the rest of the stats, such as her type, what her radar does and what her gun upgrades does in detail after this. My chance of flooding by 3%. And chance of fire by 5%. Not really important. Actually, anything here is it's up to you to be honest, also, whatever you want. So, if you have the spare cash, you might as well just put something there if you want to. Moving along now to the stats. As we can see, the stock Minikaze has a hit point of 9,600, a firing range of 6.9 kilometers, a rate of fire of 5.0 rounds per minute, a 180 degree turret turn of 45 seconds. A max shell dispersion of 67 meters, a max HE damage of 2,200, a chance of fire that is 10%, a max AP damage of 2,000, a max torpedo range of 7 kilometers, reload time on the torpedoes which is 47 seconds, max torpedo damage of 14,400, a max speed, this is the ship speed itself, of 39 knots, a turning radius of 550 meters, a rudder shift time of 4.2 seconds, a surface detectability of 5.9 kilometers, an aerial detectability of 3.1 kilometers. 